What have we done so far is we have shown you the step down DC to DC buck converter circuit and we showed you the components that are used within that circuit. So what we're going to do now is we are going to develop an intuitive approach to describe how is the circuit is working. After that, we will go over the mathematical development to show you the equations that are used to govern the circuit. So for now we are going to develop the intuitive approach and the first question that I would ask is why do we need to use a step down DC to DC converter? The answer is very simple. In many applications we would like to use a battery as a power source to supply electronic circuits which usually require low voltage. For example we can use a 12 volt lead acid battery that has six cells within it and we would like to supply a five volts to a TTL logic circuits. Another problem that arises with the battery source is the fact that the voltage of the battery is not constant. If we look for example at the voltage across the 12 volt lead acid battery as it's being discharged, the curve of the voltage might look like this where we can say that the nominal voltage is 12 volts. Clearly that the voltage across the battery as it's being discharged is not constant. The voltage for example at the end of the charging phase can be as high as 15 volts while the voltage will remain roughly constant for most of the time a little bit around the 12 volts a little bit higher or a little bit lower but as soon as the battery becomes empty voltage will drop very low to protect the battery from damaging we need to make sure that the voltage will not drop below 10.5 volts what's clear here is the input voltage vi is not fixed at 12 volts because the voltage across the battery changes as we are discharging the battery however we would like to for example control or regulate the voltage at the output to be at 5 volts. The 5 volts here is just an, an example. It can be 3.3 volts or it can be 2.1 volts or whatever. However, the objective of the DC-DC converter is to regulate the output voltage and this is a step-down converter so we need to make sure that the voltage will remain at a fixed value that is less than the input voltage. The question now is how is the puck converter controls the voltage? The answer is very simple. By controlling the duty cycle of the switch. So the switch is controlled by the gate. When the voltage of the gate reads, for example, 10 volts, then the switch becomes closed. And if it reads zero, the switch becomes open. So we can control the duty cycle of the switch basically by sending rectangular balls to the gate as shown here. And then we can see that the frequency of the rectangular balls is a function of the time period that we call it here T switch. And the duty cycle is basically the ratio of the on time over the total time of the switch. So the on time basically is D, where D is the duty cycle, times the time period of the switch. So we can control the voltage at the output basically by controlling the on time of the switch, which is a function of the duty cycle. Now we would like to know what happens at the load and the load here is composed of the two components, the R and the C component. So before we do that, we would like to replace this switch with the ideal switch. That's just to make the circuit looks easier and simpler to uh, analyze. In the real world, when the switch is connected, you're going to have small R on across that switch. That's responsible for the voltage drop from the a collector to the emitter junction however we can replace it for ideal switch for now because we are developing the intuition of how the circuit is working so we're gonna replace the switch with the ideal switch and then we would like to see what happens for the R 
C circuit only. So we're gonna remove the inductor and we're gonna remove the diode. So the circuit looks very simple and over here we're gonna start by saying that the switch is uh, closed so I have sent a pulse to the gate and that made the switch to be closed. By doing that, clearly the voltage at the output is the same as the voltage at the input. So if we plot the curve for what happened so far, we can say that the voltage V out is basically equal to VI. Let's say that at T equals T1, we have decided to open the switch. So what do you think will happen now? When we open the switch, then the capacitor will start to discharge to supply the resistor with the current. This is something that we probably studied in basic circuit theory. We know that the voltage across the capacitor then will exponentially decay as shown here. This is of course governed by the exponential decay equation that everybody probably knows and that is a first order RC circuit. Now let's assume that we are going to increase the value of the capacitor. Now keep in mind that the resistor value is basically the load and the load is something that we cannot control. That something is controlled by the next phase circuit uh, so we cannot control the load current all what we can do as circuit designers here is to control the capacitor so let's say that we increase the capacitor if we increase the capacitor then the time constant of the rc circuit becomes larger so we expect the decaying voltage to take longer time as shown here and let's say that we can increase the capacitor even higher then we can see that the response of the decaying voltage becomes even slower as shown here. If we make the capacitor even very large, you can see that the decay becomes slower. It's almost as a straight line because the capacitor value is very large and the time constant is so large, then the decaying time of the RC circuit is very slow. So we are interested in that. We are interested when the capacitor value is very large. We are also interested in this small little region just right after the switch has opened. So why we are interested in that? Because after some short period of time, we are going to charge the capacitor again, and we can do that by closing the switch. We are interested in this small region because then we are going to short circuit the switch and uh, start charging the capacitor again. So the idea here is that we are going to send rectangular pulses to the switch to keep opening and closing the switch, uh, as shown here in this graph. Now the advantage of using very high frequency to trigger the switch on and off is we don't have to use a very, very, very large capacitor because the frequency is too large. If the frequency is too large, we're gonna charge the capacitor again very quickly. That means the voltage will not drop dramatically with a small capacitance. So this is one of the advantages of using switch mode uh, DC-DC converter, uh, is the fact that we can use higher frequency, which means that we do not have to use as big capacitors as we do in other type of circuits like the linear uh, voltage regulators. So now we are interested in seeing what happens to the voltage across the capacitor in this RC circuit as we are switching the gate of the switch on and off using the rectangular pulses. So let's draw the graph of the rectangular pulses again over here. So that's what we have. Those are the rectangular pulses of the switch. When the voltage is high, the switch is closed, and when the voltage is zero, the switch is open. So when the switch is closed, that means short circuit, the voltage at the output across the capacitor will be the same as the input voltage VI. And that is shown here in the graph. 
However, when the switch opens, we can see that the voltage across the capacitor will drop because it will be discharging into the resistor. So we can see the voltage will drop until the switch close. When the switch close, then the voltage will ramp up to VI again. And this will continue as the switch will keep open and close as shown here. We end up with a voltage at the output with a small ripple due to the discharge and the charge of the capacitor. Now if you look at the current through the switch, the current through the switch will spike when the switch close. So at the moment when the switch close, the current through the switch will spike to charge the capacitor again. So we would expect to have a spike. This spike will happen at every time the switch close. Looking at the circuit here, we have several disadvantages. The first disadvantage we have is the fact that we cannot control the output voltage. The output voltage is fixed to be around the eye. And then we have ripple. And then we also have spikes in the current. So this is not good. One of the ways or one of the clever ways to solve this problem is to add inductor between the switch and the capacitor. This inductor will smooth the current because the inductor acts as a storage energy. So when the switch is closed, the inductor will absorb that energy. But when the switch is open, the inductor will supply the capacitor with that stored energy. So the inductor behaves as a buffer that will absorb the voltage difference between VI and V out. It will smooth that current. So the current through the switch into the capacitor will be smoothed out with the inductor. The only problem is that the inductor must have continuous current that's flowing through it. So when the switch is open, we must have a path for the current to flow. And the only way we can do that is by having this diode. So that is why we have the diode here. The diode here will guarantee the current will flow through the inductor when the switch is opened.